Well, welcome back everybody, it's me GSD, back again with some more Y2K. Went through all that exposition. And now we're going up to, uh... Back to the haunted ass factory, I don't know where we're gonna- Alright, get in there. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. She gone. Is this working? It's working, let's go. What will you do? Go to the next floor, of course. Um, is that boss? Is that God? What the frig is this? Are you the one from the arcade? No. Are you? No. Hair is different. But the hair is different on both of them. It's two different peeps. We saw something we never could have imagined. A being made of stars. The entire galaxy, no, the universe maybe, compressed into the silhouette of one entity. It hadn't noticed us at first. We were as insignificant to him as the trillions of stars at its core. But when provoked, it came after us, like we were the most sought after thing in the universe. I'd been scared before, everyone has, but those past memories of fright were nothing compared to what we had just experienced. As if a black hole incarnate had come to exist and it wanted us gone. As if consuming us was its only purpose. I couldn't say why I felt that way at the time, but I had known it was true. And with all this in mind, Sammy's vanishing was starting to feel like the least supernatural thing I would experience. Oh shit! Wow, that bell music. <laughs> no skills, right? Wait, what? Oh! I can use Panda. Okay, let me just attack. That's good ah. enough. Protected by some unknown force. Skills. Take rapid foes to damage enemies with the blinding light of the camera flash. Try it. Yeah, we dead. Was I not supposed to do this? You dead too. I'm just gonna let them die. I think I need to run, in general, and just get out of here. You kidding me? Failed to run away. Michael, run. Nice. Okay, get out. Let's just get out. The hell was that? Can I not? Found so the PP. I don't think I need any of these. Come again. Let me items. I need healing. Or PP restore this one. Okay. There we go. Maybe I should check upstairs. Oh! What the hell was that? It, what the hell is going on? Well, what, what just happened? 
Can you even believe what just happened? Oh man, dude! We need to get your photos developed! Developed? This thing is digital, baby! <laughs> so what now? Do we just leave? I'm gonna go with... Yes! The Chance Traveler. Once again, I had left the old factory, frightened and confused. And once again, I didn't have Sammy with me. I didn't- I missed a tip! As I waited outside of Michael's house for him to get his transfer cable, I couldn't help but be uneasy. I still didn't, don't, I still didn't know where Sammy was. And all we had found was more mystery. Okay, dude. Let's go upload these. My mom's on the phone. So if we want to go online, we'll have to go back to your house. Sorry about all the back and forth here. At least now you'll remember where I live. Yeah, I guess so. You're the one with the pond. Let's keep going. Is that stop sign still there? But like it kicked me, it killed me in like one hit. So I don't think I want to deal with that just yet. Slap. Let's go and get this digital. Did you leave the stove on? What? While we waited for Michael's camera to transfer the photos, we began to talk. I was talking to my cousin about this recently. The lifelong implications of seeing something actually, undeniably supernatural. Specifically, your reflection doing something that you were not doing. He has a six-year-old daughter. She's really precocious. Apparently, she told my cousin that when she looked into the mirror, she was smiling, but that she knew she wasn't smiling. When I thought about that, I knew it would destroy any respect you had for the rules of life and the boundaries of what could happen. I asked him what he said, and he just shrugged his shoulders and said, eh, kids say weird shit. I pushed him a little bit on the subject later on after he had a few drinks in him, and he said that it scared him to picture his daughter and another version of his daughter in the mirror, smiling when the other looked so miserable. He told me that his wife said his daughter was just confused, that she probably felt sad but was smiling from having fun playing. So inside, she wasn't smiling, but outside, she was. Maybe she couldn't understand what it meant to look happy outwardly, but feel inwardly depressed. Like as if her vocabulary wasn't enough to express depression, but, I don't know. She is a smart kid and somehow it felt wrong. Her reflection smiled at her? That's really creepy. Have you ever had any other experiences with paranormal stuff? Like before? Not really. I've always had a bit of an interest in it. I always thought that these sort of things follow certain people around. Like there is something that picks a particular person and forces them to see all the weirdness that others miss out on. You say that with a lot of affection. I don't know. It's just kind of been my thing for a while. Conspiracies, ghosts, missing people, things like that. When did you first get into this sort of thing? I can't remember one thing that really pulled me in. My parents always fell asleep watching TV. They used to sneak into their room and watch those missing persons shows while they were sleeping. Once your mom finally got internet to Frankton, I started checking out some of the more paranormal websites. Before long, I realized that the information was too scattered. I spent a few weekends learning HTML, and before I knew it, Onism 1999 had over 15,000 hits each week. Wait, you were involved with making Onism 1999? You didn't know that? I figured that's why you kept talking to me about the missing Asian girl. No, I just needed to get all that off my chest. Look, Michael, I need to be entirely honest with you. But, yeah, just promise me you won't think I'm insane or anything. Okay, fair enough. What did you lie about? I met the girl who went missing. Her name is Sammy. I had followed a cat into the abandoned factory, and I found her there. She had been looking for her cat. I just assumed the cat hung out there and she had gone in to try and find him when he didn't go back home. But the thing is, 
She said some really strange stuff. Stuff about living in the factory, pretending not to know what elevators were. Well, okay, maybe not pretending. I think she really didn't know what they were. There were weird gaps in her knowledge that I had interpreted as her being quirky, but now I wonder if there was actually something really wrong with her. You saw her yesterday, right? So you saw her after she went missing? That's actually a good thing, Alex. This means she wasn't taken by some serial killer or a rapist. It means she was swallowed up by a being made of stars and planets. How is that better? Fair enough. So, what was her last name? Did she tell you that much? Maybe we can check online for a missing persons report. You could call the police and tell them you know where the video was taken. I don't know. There still is a part of me that thinks that, like... What, that you dreamed it? Dude, I don't know. That would be a pretty specific dream. So you think you went into the factory, came home, and then had a really realistic dream where you met a missing girl you hadn't seen before? But... <sighs> you see, she didn't exactly look like the girl in the video. There was something skeletal about her appearance. Something otherworldly. Otherworldly? Yeah. Dude, just forget I said it. Did the pictures upload? Yeah, let me pull them up. How is this possible? They completely distorted the photos! Holy shit! Okay, well, yeah, this is pretty otherworldly. <sighs> it was as if someone had cracked an egg over my head, and what trickled out was hot dread, a feeling of pure anxiety. All of my fears were confirmed. What I was experiencing was real. There was no doubt about it. We uploaded the photos to Onism 1999 and waited for an explanation. We had our doubters, but more people wanted to believe than not. And with each reply, Sammy got pushed further away from the forefront of the discussion. I explained how the building was the same one from the Elevator Girl video, that everyone was more concerned by the creepy figures in the photo. Each time my little mailbox turned red, I slowly realized that everyone on this forum wanted the content to be true. They needed it to be. They needed it to be. A few people tried to explain why the photos were distorted, but most people believed it to be ghosts, or the devil, or other stupid things like that. I considered myself something of a philosopher in college. I thought I had answers, but now that I've come face to face with the otherworldly, I know now that every person who tells you about spirituality, dead people and all that have no idea what they're talking about. Someone told a lie and it somehow stuck. With the exception of my post, most of the things on that forum seemed like lies. It wasn't until about two weeks after my post, when a user posted something about a girl who could rip holes in time and space. I wouldn't have believed it myself, but he had photos. And we had seen the girl before. Wait, what? So you realize we've seen this chick before, right? Where? She... Wait. Knew you'd get there eventually. It's that old lady from the arcade. 26 is not old! Jeez, enough of that old crap. She's probably our age. Don't lump me in with you 20-somethings. I have a bright future ahead of me. Oh, if only you knew. You're gonna be there at some point, my dude. Just wait till you're done with college. You'll be... Boring and fat like the rest of your graduating class? I'm looking forward to it. In the meantime, I will continue to be my interesting, slim, nubile self. Nubile? I stand by my statement. Anyway, <laughs> let's take another look at those photos. Wow. It's just so unbelievable. What is the likelihood that this is a thing? It's incredibly unlikely. But since we've got nothing better to do, let's say we visit Ye Old Arcade for some air hockey and interview an interdimensional traveler. Cool. Let me look at my postage miss 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 first. PCCF. Got a nism. I want to go and check out my mail first. No. Okay, so we'll go back. Onism. 
Let's see here. Yeah, there's phantom vibration in my pocket car accident from when I was a child. Psychic energy, not really it. supernatural, but weird game a cutie's brother made. Elevator girl. I am the elevator girl. Semi peck. Pronunciation semi peck. New deals. Wait, elevator girl. Semi Sammy 21 missing and the thief. She stole my heart. Inserting missing woman poster. Interestingly enough, I saw this missing person's ad this morning. Scanned it in. Sorry for the photo quality. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you mofos will surely do so. But is this not the Asian girl from the elevator video? Rich reaction nod. I am the elevator girl, Semi Peck. My mother's name is Kyung Su, and she's mentally handicapped. She suffers from bipolar. One disorder shows signs of being. Wait, what? Semi human? Please stop looking for me. I got back into the elevator. Got the into. Wait, 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 wait. This is fake. Distorted space creatures in the elevator girl. Mysterious girl with mind powers. Mysterious girl sighted. Main Street Franklin last Tuesday evening. I witnessed her create this rift in space. Holy shit. What? Some Scott Pilgrim ass shit right there. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going. I guess let's save that first though. Let's call again sometime. Sometimes I leave the stove on. Is there now? No. Am I forever going to be level one? Is there no leveling after this? Why would you give my group XP and not me, though? There's a door at the side of the house over here, by the way. No. Okay, let's keep going. Go and explore and see if we can find. Hey, did you move? Just this bring around the. Oh no, you said this already. Wait. There's a dude in the yard now. Mister, what's going on? Do you know how to get to the park? All the old guys say the park is the place to be. Y'all move too. But do you say the same thing? I wonder if he knows. I think he knows. Pretty sure he does. Oh god, I hope she doesn't know. No, they say the same thing, they just moved. Y'all are in the same spot. There she is! So, are you gonna talk to her? Are you kidding me? That's totally your job. Just man up and say something to her. I... Nah, I, I don't think I should. It'd be, uh, good for you to <laughs> so learn to mad. talk to girls before you go away to college. I know how to talk to girls, but she is a senior citizen, man. What is she, like, 27? Ew. Uh-oh. That's your thing, man. I told you to cut it out with the age crap. She's probably no older than 24. And besides, aren't you the nubile one? You're much more desirable. Hmm, yes, that's true, I am. Listen here, boys. We have a zero creeping on women policy here. If you'd like to ogle some women, I'm sure your mothers would love it if you were home in time for supper. It's not that. It's just we have this photo of you that we were. You've been taking photos of me? Not helping. Wow. You guys are even more screwed up than I thought. Can't say you'd be the first perks I've thrown out of this place. Oh no! Mysterious Vela appeared. I am mysterious to feel my powers as lame ass. Shit! Oh no! Uh, we're gonna go with skills. Photo shoot. One damage to all enemies, okay. Yes. <laughs> 
crap. Dead. This can't be game over. Okay. Okay, okay, we give in. Just, he's off. We didn't mean to be creepy. Then why were you taking photographs of me? Hey, we didn't take the photos. Someone on the internet did. Someone on the internet? What are you talking about? If you'd stop slamming our heads together for one minute, we'd love to explain. <sighs> okay, explain. There's this website where people post conspiracies and other weird things, and there's this photo of you, like, exploding things with your mind. Exploding things with my mind? I haven't done that in a while, so I'm sure it's an old photo. So you're not denying that you can do that? Of course I can't. Not with my mind, at least. This goes against all the better judgment I have in me, but... Can you take me to a computer to show me these photos? Yeah, sure. I live like five minutes from here. Are you in the party? You're not in the party. Anybody else here? Hey, somebody new. No loitering. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get back to the house. I want to read these tips, but the damn screen goes by so fast. Commencing save. Nice. Still level one. How the hell do you level up in this game? Show Vela the pictures. Well, that's me. Just, I don't know when these were taken. How exactly do you explain all the blowing stuff up with your mind things? Can you really do that? It's not exactly with my mind. I use sound. Remember when I kicked your ass earlier? I used the sound of my keytar to deal physical damage. If you study the physical properties of sound, you can learn enough about acoustics to both heal and damage objects orally. Where did you learn to do something like that? Oh, years of private practice and studying, really. So tell me more about this website. What is Onism1999? Basically, it's a place on the internet for people to talk about conspiracies, the occult, and anything supernatural. Seems like something boys would like. Do you recognize the location from these photos? That's behind the old grocery store. Obviously, you've been there before. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what's your name, by the way? My name's Vela Wild. I'm... It's interesting to meet you. I'm guessing you're a cameraman, and this is your sidekick, Ginger Boy? Usually I go by Alex. Only my mom is allowed to call me Ginger Boy. She really gets us. You really would be my sidekick, Alex. Cameraman by day, Michael by night. Right. So, why do you two spend all your time on such odd websites? Do you really believe this stuff? Michael and I spent the next hour or so recounting the events of me finding Sammy, and us running into the star creatures inside of the old factory. As we told the story, Ellen just looked into my eyes and never reacted. I first began with trepidation. As I went on, I could tell she was doing her best to understand my story. Something felt familiar about her. But not in the, I've met her sort of way. Something deeper. I dated a girl in college who was a women and gender studies major. She told me that she believed men and women were all the same at our core. That we were all made of the same elements, not just on a physical level, but in a metaphysical level. She was a strong believer in spirituality, although she'd be the first to tell you she was religious. She told me she believed everyone had soulmates, plural a series of people we were compatible with. In her theory, this applied to friendship as well as romantic relationships. She said that when the universe was created, all matter was one object, and that since we're all matter, we are all the same. She said that she believes our soulmates were cut from the same section of that initial piece of matter. That unexpected feeling of familiarity you feel when you meet someone for the first time means you were meant to meet. 
I personally didn't believe it. I still don't think she has all her facts straight. But every time I feel what I felt when Vela looked in my eyes, I thought of this explanation. Did you manage to speak with the entities? The entities? Uh, I guess you mean the star creatures. Yes, those are the ones. No! We were too busy running for our lives! Did you try and take photographs of them, Michael? Yeah, let me pull them up. Vela told us things. Confusing things. Things that, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have believed. The way she spoke seemed two-sided. As if for a few moments, a side of her that she was trying to keep hidden was visible. And as soon as we noticed, she made to cover herself up. She made jokes more often than she was serious. But when the serious aspect of her personality appeared, I was convinced that's who she really was. This was almost... That's the thing with people, isn't it? You could show them all the mysteries of the universe, but if they're distracted by the human element of the tale, they'll shift all of their attention there. Self-consumed with humanity. Self-consumed with other people. You know? That's just how people are. My experience with them is limited, but what I've observed was powerful. I understand that what I'm about to tell you will sound like a lie, so I ask you to look past the words I'm saying and hear the truth behind them. A short time ago, I entered into a dark place, both physically and metaphysically. While I was there, I encountered the entities for the first time. I can't say what about their presence was so striking to me, but the moment I saw them, I felt something. Something that was weighted. Like their bodies took up the entirety of the room, as if they were the room. At first, I approached one and we spoke. However, the contents of the conversation isn't important to the story. Something I said upset it, and it tried to grab me. It was almost like a mother trying to smother its child. The pain was beyond description. It scared me to death. The entity was incredibly heavy. I managed to break free, but the weight of the thing remained on me. And for the entirety of the following week, it was as if someone was twisting a drill inside me. My head would throb and the pain felt bone deep. You probably can't imagine what it was like, you two, but just the thought of the pain now brings tears to my eyes. I reflected on her story. I wanted to reply, but something inside me told me to let the words hang in the air. It was as if the longer the pause between her words and mine, the more truth they carried. Finally, I spoke. That's horrifying. But can you explain what you mean by entered a dark place? Or more importantly, physically and metaphysically? I can understand doing it physically and mentally, but I need some help with the meta part. Metaphysical is a word. An adjective, to be more specific. It means pertaining to or of the nature of metaphysics. Metaphysics is the branch of philosophy that includes the first principles, includes ontology and cosmology, and is intimately connected with epistemology. Epistemology is, of course, a branch of philosophy that investigates the origin, nature, methods, and limits of human knowledge. Thank you for the definition which I already knew. I was looking for something more concrete, more tangible. Wow, y'all are two boring-ass individuals. I'm afraid that's all I feel comfortable telling you. I don't know you at all, and to reveal something so personal seems like I'd be opening myself up to vulnerability. Do you mean to imply that you found a way to exist inside of a metaphysical space? That you... Enough! I don't need to talk about this with you. It makes me uncomfortable. Don't you get that? Okay, okay, sorry. I didn't mean to piss you off. Look, I need to get back to the arcade. I was technically in the middle of a shift. I'm gonna write my number down. Call me if you see any more interesting comments on my photos or have a run-in with the entities. Wait, 
I have one more question before you go. All right. How did you get to be so powerful? You took both of us on and barely broke a sweat. <laughs> you act as if that's impressive. Look, I've trained myself in the metaphysical space, inside of the mind dungeon. I like you two, so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Here is one last number. Call it if you ever want to open your mind and expand your battle abilities. That's all I'll say for now. The guy on the other end can explain more. The Mind Dungeon is now available. You can access the Mind Dungeon from any phone. This location is vital in developing your party's abilities. Do not neglect to visit here often. Is this how I level up? The way I look at it, we have two things we need to do. If we want to hang out with Vela again, we're going to need to train ourselves. Should be at least level 5 before we call also, her. Also, if we want to call her, we're going to need to search Onism 1999 for some interesting posts. Okay, simple enough. Go grind and then give Vela a call. Yeah, but don't forget to search Onism 1999 for some good posts. She'll probably hang up on you and kick our butts again if we don't have anything cool. Man, are we even cool enough to hang out with someone like her? Nope! I'm still growing, and you're an overgrown man-child who can barely pick up a record. <laughs> so let's head out of Frankton and try to find some things to beat up. Sounds good. We should stock up on some healing items at the burger joint before heading out. Again? Who is it now? Why is my phone always ringing off the hook? Hey! Just calling to see if you figured it out. I would love to just come out and say it, but I think it would scare you to death. And that would ruin everything. Nope. I haven't figured anything out. Look, if you're just gonna keep calling me and say vague, creepy shit, you should at least tell me your name. Ah! Oh. It's your best childhood friend. Think back to when you met me. We were kids. I think losing my religion by how I am had just become a big hit. My mom didn't want me listening to it because she was afraid it would turn me into a bad kid or something. I went over to your house and we listened to it on your stereo for hours. My mom came to pick me up from your house, heard the song, and freaked out. How can you not remember that? It was the funniest thing. The story was so specific. It sounded so familiar, and yet I couldn't place it. It was like I had read it in a book somewhere or watched it on a TV show. But still, no particular name or date came to mind. Yeah, you're right. You probably wouldn't remember that. Look, I'm going to keep calling you until you remember me. Remember what you used to say. Everything happens for a reason. That reason is nothing happens for any reason. What a weirdo. Ha! <laughs> You're damn right. Let me see something here. We can call from any phone, right? I should save first. What will you do? Save here. Let's take a peek at that mine dungeon, and then we'll end this off right. Call again anytime. Okay, I'm gonna call. The mind dungeon. Please come in. Word. Hey, I remember you. I don't know who you are. Encourage your friends to level up. Yeah. Michael's now level two. Wait, what? It's nice to encourage your friends. Wait, how did. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, seriously, I'm fine. Please don't fret. I'm Marlene. Although, that's just the name my parents gave me. Please call me Crow. Although, most people just call me Kay. You look confused. May I ask why? Oh? You don't say. Please forgive my rudeness. I don't mean to pry, but I can't help myself. Welcome to the Dungeon of the Mind. 
I imagine this is your first time here. Ah, I see. I see. Where should I begin? Well, first I should begin by saying in the fight between you and the Mind Dungeon, back the Mind Dungeon. For all intents and purposes, the Mind Dungeon is the only thing that truly exists. Everything else is just shattered fragments of time and matter floating in the... Remember to save often. One advantage in keeping a diary is that you become aware, with reassuring clarity, of the changes in which you constantly suffer. Plus, it's never... Well, good luck. I've often said that it's comforting to reflect that the disproportion of things in the world seems to be only arithmetical. I'm not really sure what I mean by that either. Lastly, in my pseudo-philosophical rantings, I forgot to mention some- You may have heard this in a distant dream, but I feel like I should remind you. When you kill an enemy, it's dead forever. Oh! Killing enemies gives you experience points. Spend those experience points to open doors inside the mine dungeon. Remember though, you can decide not to kill. However, doing so might not be wise all the time, since you'll want to find experience points to spend on character upgrades. Why are you yelling at me like that? Whoa. So, let me see. I'm not level 2. How do I level up? Save here. Everybody's got these long, drawn-out-ass explanations. I appreciate the voice work, but keep it a little succinct, you know? Hey, kill monsters, get experience points a day forever, dead, dead, dead. Level 2. Plus 1, plus 1.5. What? Oh. What? Oh, two points of speed? What would you like to do? Change the tribute? Oh, if I beat the room, I get to level up? Let's go with... <laughs> Three luck? Fuck yes! Get me in the room. Enter the room. Ox found luck icon. Ox's luck increased by three. Nice! And oh! Marlene, what are you doing? What's that? You can't be bothered? Should I just choose for you? No. I choose my own damn stuff. So we did that luck. You can do more luck. I'll do more luck. Do I have to pick other stuff then? Okay. Uh, health. Enter. HP icon. I'd like to do more luck. Mo luck, please. I guess I have to pick one. Three strength and four speed. 3 PP. I do 3 strength. Because I can dodge pretty well. And then we'll do 2 defense. Enter room. And luck. Or sorry, defense. Hey! Wish to will level up it will cost you 100 XP. Yes. Only you can decide how you'll grow from here. Choose wisely. Can I get Moluck? Michael is now level 3. Alex is now level 2. Alex can now customize the stats, including inside of the mine dungeon. Word? What? Just do these up. I gotta focus on the luck. It's how you go in RPGs. 
That's good. I'm not gonna like mess around with my other sets, but I need that luck to be high. Skill icon. I also learned the skill smooth jazz. And I can't progress any further, right? It'll cost you. Yeah. Sorry. More train. So I'm level four. We need to be at least level five. Get me out of here. Phew. Okay. So we, we got jacked up a little bit. In a good way. Let's see here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. See, now Alex is starting to get a little stranger. Anyway. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna go outside of town and grind a little bit. Maybe we can take care of this stupid stop sign. But anyway, I'll see you all in the next episode of Y2K.